Howdy everybody, David Minkin here, starting player with Connect More, and welcome to another edition of 3TV, the tabletop view of Tiny Tabletoppers. This is a series where I not only explain the game to you and give you my final thoughts at the very end of the video, but it's also a series where I'm going to show you this game played with my own Tiny Tabletoppers, and today we are featuring the Hare and the Tortoise. Now, the reason why I do this particular set of videos is because I want for you to see how this game is actually played with the little guys themselves because they do not lie. If they don't like something, they're not going to play it. And if they like it, you'll see it on their faces. So the whole point of this is for me to not only explain the game to you, but to show you how it's played with your own little guys. So you might be able to make a decision whether or not this game is appropriate for you and your family or your tiny table toppers. So without any further ado, let's talk a Quick brief introduction about the hare and the tortoise. Now this plays two to five players, and it says ages seven and up, but again, I've spoiler alert, I've already told you I'm playing this with my four-year-old. It's absolutely accessible to the younger tiny table toppers as well, and you'll see why. And this is in fact the 2014 Golden Geek Award winner for the best children's game. Is it worthy of that praise? Absolutely yes, and it was in pretty good company because finishing number two for the 2014 award was Doodle Quest, and this is another game, especially my four-year-old, really, really enjoys, but he definitely gets more fulfillment out of the hare and the tortoise. And finishing third is a game that I really enjoy, Ivor the Engine, and this finished third for best children's game, but currently this one is still just a little bit inaccessible for my tiny table toppers. And just because there's some uh, language dependency on the cards and some reading that's actually required. But this here was actually my vote for best family, one of the, my votes for best family game for 2014. So anyhow, those are the, um, the games that uh, the Hare and the Tortoise beat out for this prestigious award. So let's take some time and take a look at this game. As you can see, I have it laid out here in front of me, and it is a rare racing game, but it's not just a racing game uh, per se like you might imagine because there's other racing games that are out there. And some of the racing games that my tiny table toppers really enjoy is Hit the Throttle, Monza, and Camel Up, the Spiel de Jari's award winner for 2014. Now the thing that's in common with these three racing games here is that they involve dice and sometimes there are moments where you just don't feel like you're in control of your own destiny. But well, what sets this hare and tortoise apart from these other racing games is that a lot of it is card driven and so you get to introduce hand management to your tiny table topper so that's very important. The other thing you're going to introduce is all these different characters that are on the board they all have different roles. So you're introducing asymmetric roles into your tiny tables of vernacular. The other thing that the hare and tortoise introduces is the concept of hidden objectives or different victory point conditions. And by that, each player at the beginning of the game is going to be dealt one card which has a character on it which corresponds to one of the characters that's going to participate in the race, which is indicated here by these wooden blocks. Now, in addition, the character will be dealt an additional card where they get to choose another character that they want to cheer for it may or may not be the same person. Now at the very end of the race, the top three finishers are going to be awarded victory points. Five victory points for the first place finisher, three victory points for the second place finisher, and two victory points for the third place finisher. So the player who's able to get the most victory points by placing best the characters that they have chosen at the beginning of their game to cheer for is in fact the winner. So the neat thing about that is all the players who are playing the game may be cheering for some characters that overlap and also for some different characters, which makes for a really interesting interesting race because all these racers have different movement abilities. So that introduces this asymmetric um, notion, these asymmetric powers into your little tiny table toppers of vocabulary as well. And they'll start to learn how they might want to use these different powers at different times to impact how the racers are actually going to finish and hopefully lead them to victory. So that's just a brief overview of some of the skills that are going to be introduced with this game with you and your tiny table toppers. So why don't we take a look at the tiny table toppers play and please come back and join me for my final thoughts or daddy's thoughts where we get more in depth about all of these things that I just gave you a quick run through over. So I hope you enjoy the run through, I hope you enjoy the review, and I hope I see you for daddy's thoughts. Thanks guys. Okay. This is the race clock and this is the finish line. That's right. Okay. So this is the fox. He's a racer from the tortoise and the hare fairy tale. <laughs> The turtle, who's also from the fairy tale. The hare who is 
very much also from the fairy tale. This is the wolf. He always gets minus points, and he's also from the fairy tale. What sound does he make? <laughs> and this is the sheep. He runs really fast, and he always gets one extra play. Okay, so what I'm going to give you first is, first of all, we have these cards with a star on them. What's on these cards, guys? Play-o! Yeah, these cards correspond to each of the little guys that Mason just talked about, all the little critters in the fairy tale. And so we're all going to choose one of these cards, and this will give us secretly one guy to cheer for, right, guys? So, so now I'm going to give you each seven cards, right? Okay, so now that I've given you seven cards, we all get to choose one more of the characters that we were dealt in our cards to be a second guy that we're going to cheer for in the race. So here you can choose to diversify your selections, or you can double down if you happen to have the same card that you were dealt beforehand, and I really hope he does well. Alright, so guys, are we ready to play? Yeah! Are, you, are you ready to cheer on your animals? Yeah! Okay, so Mason is the starting player. So off you go, Mason. Mason played here was the Alpha Wolf card. What does that mean? That means so, nobody gets to move. Yeah, right. Well, no other animals get to move. But Finley, it's your turn. So the Wolf card has been played. What do you want to play now? I just want to get rid of these bottles. Okay, so what Finley did, did fin Finley played the fourth of one animal. That means we stop right now, and it's time to race the animals. So, since we played this alpha wolf card, now who played this card again? Me. So what sound does he make? Oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> I'm not quite like that, I don't think. So this means no other animal moves, including the tortoise. So the, we played one wolf card, so the wolf gets to move one space. And the rest of these cards are put aside. So now, who's the starting player? I believe it's Finley, right, Mason? So hand him the starting player token. Oh, it's doosh, doosh, doosh. <laughs> You're so All right, Finley, what do you got to play? Finley, you have one. Hey, you don't have... look at his cards. Finley, you only have the ones I'm cheering for. You have the ones I'm cheering for. What's the doosh? Oh, and here, and flip that little. Yes. So, and here, Finley, I, I'm going to give you four more cards here. He gets to move oh, five. so Finley played four cards all by themselves. So we're going to race right away with the sheep. So how many spaces does the sheep move with that? Five. Yeah, the number of cards plus one. Close I think I'm going to. Gonna, I think I'm going to play the wolf it's card. Close to the finish line. Okay, Mason, your turn. Are you turn <laughs> with the hair of the sheep? Yes. Well, you got to get this hair moving. Guess, guess what I'm going to play? Finley's, I'm going to play another wolf. Finley said he has a sheep and a dog. A sheep and a dog? He said a sheep dog. Uh, okay, guys, I'm going to play the wolf. So there's four cards, so it's time to race. So we go in order here on the handy dandy card as to who gets to go first. So the first one is the hare. So there's two hare cards. So he gets to move two spaces. No, he gets to move a hundred. No, one, two. And now we got the wolf, and he gets to move the number of cards minus one when you got three or four. Three. Oh. oh, you know what I forgot, I keep forgetting to do, guys? What? Is the tortoise. He moves even if there's not a card played for him. So he would have moved last turn, and he would have moved the turn before, wouldn't he? Because the first turn we had the howling wolf, but he would have moved when the sheep moved, and he would have moved when the rabbit moved. So we made a mistake, but here is the tortoise. He's walking along now, isn't he, guys? My turn? Yep. <laughs> That's all I got. Whoa! How many sheeps do you got there? One, two, three, four, four. cards. So, four. so how many spaces is that sheep going to move? I four. want Here's five. Me. I want to move him because I played the card. Sure. Do you think he's going? But then he's going to get across the water. And you think he's going to get thirsty? No. I think he's going to get thirsty. All of this fast running by the sheep. I think he's going to get real thirsty here in a second. But one. We play another sheep card, that means he's going to move on the guy right. I want. Oh. So Mason, are you going to move your sheep? Yep. Okay. One, two. Uh-oh, so what happens at the river? Why don't you tell everybody what happens at the river? The sheep's 
stands on his hands and head and he drinks the water. That's right. Is that the sound he makes? <laughs> no, he makes. He makes this sound. Oh. And, and this no, he makes this sound. <laughs> he makes this sound. <laughs> Nay! <laughs> and, 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 he actually makes his. He actually makes this sound. And, no, you this have to make this sound. <laughs> oh, and does he does he burp when he's finished drinking? He burps like this. <laughs> okay. No, he burps like this anyway. Okay. So, so if the sheep, it, guys, so moving on, so if the sheep move, the tortoise also moves one space, even though there is no card played for him. He just keeps trucking along. Now, Finley, here, why don't you hand Finley the starting player token? Hello, neighbor. Hello, neighbor. Oh, you're, you're going to play the sheep? Here you go. Here's another card. Guys, do you know who I think we should get to move? The fox. He's way back here. He hasn't even moved. Why don't you guys help me move the fox? Oh, I think you guys should help I'm the fox gonna, move. I'm going to craggle his feet. You're going to craggle his feet? <laughs> and, oh, man. And then I'm going to craggle My turn. My turn, Dad. Yeah, your turn. This time I'm going to craggle. Oh, that his, hair. His hand so he can't pick up anything. Hair is on the pair. Okay, Vinny, your turn. Oh, do you have enough cards? Like one, two, three, four, five. Whoops, forgot to give Daddy, you Daddy, the hair is on the pair. The hair is on the pair? I don't want to eat a hairy pair. <laughs> That'd be That's hairy scary. That's silly. Okay, so a hairy pear. Hairy pear. Ow. That's what a hairy pear says. Ow. Well, Philly, I know. Whoa. So, Philly, you played, uh, you got four hairs now? So, let's go in order. So, the hairs move, hair moves two spaces. Why yeah, well, does he keep moving two? No, he, because when you play one to four hair cards, he always moves two spaces. But if he's in the lead, he doesn't move any spaces. So there, we move the hair. And then let's not forget about the tortoise. There's no cards, but he still gets to move one. And then we got the fox. We got one fox card. He finally moves. Oh. And oh, then the I sheep took, moves two spaces, right? And I took his head off. So he got it. See, he's running backwards. Yeah, is he running backwards now? He's <laughs> I'm gonna play two turtles. Oh, okay. And then I took. Whoa, two more turtles. Okay, so that ends the round. And so the turtles two. going to move two spaces. Two cards. Okay, there you go, Mason, your starting two. player. Two. Oh, you can't look what I've got. I have mm. a special card. In you got some juicy now. stuff? Oh. Uh -uh. Don't, don't look, don't look. Now, you know what, guys? I think this fox, he's so far back, you guys should probably ditch some of your fox cards. It's just junk. Hey, eh? You should ditch some of your fox cards. It's just Are junk. Are you sure about that? Yeah, I think you guys should just ditch some of them. Are you sure about that? Okay, Finley. Daddy, he has his cards upside down. Oh, well, that's silly. Okay, but he knows what he's looking at. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know. That's silly. Ow. Show, show the camera. <laughs> Okay, Mason, where are you going to get cards? Okay, Mason, your turn. Are you going to get rid of some junk? Upside down. Everything. Uh-oh, hey, Finley. 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 Well, you're playing the alpha wolf as well, Finley? Okay, there you go, Mason. There's your card. Finley, there's I had your... an alpha oh. wolf. Okay, then you know what I'm going to play? I'm going to play two more wolf cards there. So there's four wolf cards. Do you know how many spaces he gets to move? How? No. Three. Now, do you, know, do you know the reason why the tortoise doesn't move this turn, guys? No. What? Because we played the alpha wolf. Nobody moves. Everyone is scared by the frightening howl of the wolf. Ah, uh, this junk. Well, I um, but you could have some things that could use were useful yeah. for me. Play oh. a, a couple rabbits. Oh, I just have a dog. Can you get rid of all of my guys? Are you going to get rid of some junk? Okay, I get rid of your junk. you should really play your... Rabbit. You're gonna play two hairs. I love that and there cheering you. for him. You're cheering for the hairs. Well, the hair is way back here. He's got some running to do, doesn't he? He got some boost to do. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm, I'm gonna help out Mr. Fox. I think he needs to work. Okay, well then you try to get rid of some of your junk and try to get rid of junk that's not really in in uh, in contention right now. Junk that's not gonna cause you any trouble. I know. So because he can hide in the sand. Oh, you're playing two tortoise. There you go. Okay, Finley, it's your turn. Hog on our 
the tortoise. Mm, you don't like it? You're not cheering for the tortoise, yeah. sister? I'm just... Oh, I got that Okay, so Finney's playing two wolf cards. So how many cards do we have out here in total, guys? One, two, three, four, five, eight. Seven. Nope, eight, we only got seven. Eight. Okay, so what's daddy going to play? Nah. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to play one more tortoise. So that makes eight cards, right? Mm. Okay, so now it's time to race. So let's go. So the hare gets to move two spaces. So Finley, why don't you... Oh, Mason, move the hare. Okay. And then the tortoise gets to move one space. He's running on his head. Oh, that looks painful. So the tortoise moves He's one space. He's actually running on his ears. Okay, so the tortoise moves one space, guys, because he has three cards. And then the wolf moves one space because there's only two cards. And then the fox moves one space. He moves right Oh, here. he is getting creamed, isn't he, the fox? The, the sheep's in the lead, but the fox is way behind. The fox is way now behind. We'll get him. You're cheering for him. Oh, man, he's way behind. So you know what I'm going to yeah, do? I'm, I'm going to play the fox it. card one more time here. Uh, and then it's your turn, Mason. Get rid of some. Yeah. Uh, oh, you're cheering for the sheep? Here you go. Okay, Finley, your turn. Yeah. Got none I'm cheering for now. Oh, well, you can always get rid of some junk next time. I oh, got boost. Um, oh, oh, yeah. Are you cheering for the tortoise? No, I'm cheering for the hail. I'm going to play another fox card. Okay, Mason, your turn. Finley told me what he's cheering for. Mason, I think you should play two more fox cards. I have three more. Well, you can only play two because there's already two out, and most you can have is four. Are you going to get the fox moving? Are you going to decragalize him? Oh! I don't like that nasty fox. Okay. All right, Mason. Oh, Finley, it's oh, your turn. I have one I'm cheering for. I have none I'm cheering for. Just one. Just one. Oh, well, you're going to move the tortoise? Okay, so we got two, four, six, seven cards out there. So we can only play one more card, right, guys? So I'm going to play another wolf card. And that makes eight, so let's time to race. So there's no hair cards. So now the tortoise moves one space because there's two cards out there. And then the wolf, there's three wolf cards. So the wolf gets to move two. Is the wolf in the lead? Yeah. All right. And then the sheep gets to move two spaces. Oh, and that worked out perfect because he gets to have a drink while he's there, and then the fox gets to move two spaces. Yeah, move. now he's winning. Hey guys, I'm going to move the fox. He's rounding the corner. He's coming no, out fast. He's rounding the corner. Let him round the corner on his head. Yeah, he's going to round the corner like this. Okay, Finn, <laughs> Mason, Mason, it's your turn to be starting player. You got six look cards. how he walks. Oh, that looks like it hurts. He walks yep, on six cards. Okay, good. So you gotta decide who's gonna go. You gonna play the fox this turn? Yeah, I'm getting rid of him. Gotta get rid of some junk. He's getting he's clogging. I have two I'm playing for and I really need them. <laughs> okay, I don't Are you gonna play the fox cards too? Oh, so there's four no. fox. So so the tortoise gets to move one. And then the fox gets to move four. On his head. Wow, so the fox is starting to come. He's ahead of the hare, guys. Oh, he's the one I'm cheering for. Oh, the, the hare? Okay, now Mason, Finley is starting player. Okay, Finley. Oh, nuts! A discount <laughs> don't! Hey, but, you have, but you have a couple of things that could work out good for me. But I have 85 tails. That hey, you have 86 hairs. No, you, said, you don't. You said hairs. You want to choose an animal that you want you want to race? Okay, I can play one of the woods. Oh, you're gonna play the hares? Okay, there you go. How many cards? So one, two, so one two, three, three cards. Okay, what's Daddy gonna play? You know what I'm gonna play? I'm gonna play a fox. You guys don't want that sheep to win, do you? You're gonna let the fox. You're gonna let the wolf sneak up and win. No, we're gonna let the sheep win. Oh, Mason's taking care of the sheep there. Okay, your turn, Finley. Mason, I'll get your card here in a second. Here you go, Mason. 
Well then, you know what? You know what I'm gonna do then? I'll play. Yes. I'll play. Four, four sheep cards. Okay. So yes, we love the sheep. I see I that. I want it to win. Okay. So first of all, the hair moves, and the hair gets to move two spaces. And then the tortoise moves a space. And then the wolf moves one space. And then the fox moves one space. Oh, and now the sheep gets to run across the finish line. He wins. Yeah, he wins the race, but we still got to figure out who's going to finish second and third, right, guys? And can guess who's under here. Sheep. Oh, no, don't, don't, don't tell. Don't tell. So do you know what Daddy's going to play? Oh. I'm going to play three hairs. Yay! Yeah, but it's the alpha, so one, four, five, six, seven, eight. Arr. So only you the wolf moves, but his he, where's the wolf? Is he racing? No. He's at the podium and he's making so much noise. All the guys on the field, all the guys on the track are so scared. They don't even want to get close to the podium. They're scared to finish. Finley, if you have a hare, play it. Finley, if you have Finley, if you have a fox, play it. You got foxes? Oh, don't play a fox, Finley. Yeah, play a fox. Play no, a fox. Finley, don't play a fox. Play a wolf. Oh, it's so... Well, you're playing the wolf, the fox. But you, but you know what, Mason, here, consider this. Is the turtle, the tortoise, moves no matter what. So he's going to cross the finish line unless someone plays the alpha, um, the alpha wolf. I don't have it. Yeah, but if you have a bunch of tortoise cards, you can play them because it doesn't make any difference on the game, and it might give you some extra cards for your next turn. But he's going to win. Well, the tortoise is moving if you play those cards or not, right? Play the wolf. Play the wolf. I don't play, play, play the fox. Play the fox. I don't have a fox. Mm. I'm just gonna get rid of my tortoise. I'll get rid of your tortoise. Okay, so that's four cards of one guy. First, the hare moves. No, no, he doesn't. There's no card. Then the tortoise moves. He gets to move two spaces. So does he get the last spot on the podium? Yeah, that's the second time he won the game. Uh, well, he finished third. So okay, here. Mason, yeah. the sheep gets five. So, so let's move this over here. So let everybody show who you're cheering for. I was cheering for the sheep. Well, you're cheering for the so you're cheering for the sheep and the hare. So the sheep. I was cheering for the sheep and the wolf and the wolf totally win with the Okay, so so we're gonna do Mason first. So Mason was cheering for the hare. That was a card that was dealt to him. Then he chose on the second card when he was dealt the seven at the beginning of the game to cheer for the sheep because you like the sheep, don't you? Yeah, because he gets extra moves. Yeah, so the sheep scored one first place, so he scored five points and the hare didn't make it on. So you, Mason, how many points you got for this game? Five. Five points, that was a good showing. And then Finley, he was cheering for the sheep. That was a card dealt to him. And the other card that he chose for was the wolf. And so the wolf finished second, Finley. Great score. So for finishing second, he gets three points, and the sheep gets five points. So guys, what's five plus three? I don't know. Oh. I'm good at that. Okay, then what is it? Five, six, seven, eight. Eight points? Yep. Finley, do you agree? You got eight points? Yay! Awesome. Daddy! Awesome. And then <laughs> now, now, now Daddy... Daddy was cheering for the fox, and the fox just couldn't get started, could he? He was back here the whole time. And the wolf, and the wolf finished second, so I got three points. So, I got three points, you got eight points, and how many did you get, Mason? Five. So, you finished first, Mason finished second, and Daddy finished third. So, oh. if you win, you get the finish line. No, I win, because I get most points. You get the most points. Now, guys, was that a great game? Yeah. Thank you very much for playing with me. I get the twelve. So, Mason, what do you like best about this game? I like all the players in the game. I like all the players in the game. And, Finley, what do you like best? All of the players. And, and who is your favorite player? The sheep. And why is the sheep your favorite guy? Because he wins every time and then he goes on the stale battle. So, I'm going to say thanks, everybody, for watching 3TV with my two tiny table toppers, hey, Mason Dad, look, and Finley. Hey, Dad, look at this boat. Oh, and now we have a boat. And, Mason, how old are you at the time of this recording? Five. And, Finley, how old are you? Four. Four. And that's how old they are. Mason is five and about a quarter, and Finley just turned four. And there you have playing 
the hare and the tortoise with your tiny table toppers. Thank you very much for watching. The end. Well, welcome back. Thank you very much for watching me and my tiny table toppers play this wonderful game, the hare and the tortoise. So let's just jump into some of daddy's thoughts as to what I feel that this game brings to the table that's neat and unique and makes for a very enriching experience with both me and my tiny table toppers and for my family as well. So what you'll notice first off is that this is part of a larger series, a fairy tale series that's been produced by Yellow. And this was the first one that I bought and I loved it so much and the boys loved it so much that we decided to get the rest of them as well. And part of the reason being is because it's got that fairy tale element. And the thing that I find with kids games and getting my tiny table toppers to play games, games in which that you can immediately connect with them, that, in, that you can immediately immerse them in some kind of idea of a theme or of a concept or something that they're rooted in, they're instantly interested in it. And sometimes it involves, you know, for in this particular case, it involves a fairy tale that they're quite familiar with. They're familiar with the characters. They're familiar with that. And so right away, they, they think it's really neat because now something that they know has come to life. And what's really cool about the, the series as well is they come with a little, you know, fairy tale booklet as well that gives a synopsis as to what's going on for that particular game. So immediately it comes to life and even simple basic touches of having these nice uh, uh, wooden bits with the stickers on them so they can see the the big bad wolf and they can see him running. He's wearing an um, I Heart Pig uh, little t-shirt on there, a little um, uh, muscle man shirt. It all adds to the character and the charm and really helps bring the kids um, into the, the feeling of the game. So that is fantastic and they've done a really great job with the components. Um, everything is quite nice. A nice little stand here, a little finish line here, which my boys love setting up. It's just fantastic. The only complaint to have about this game in terms of its packaging and its components and kind of the theme is uh, the card quality. The card is, are, themselves are quite thin. And so if you're designing a game that's meant to be played with little tiny table toppers, you you got to make thicker cards. For for me, the, um, the, the go to the standard is Sushi Go by Game Right Games. The cards that they've made, my tiny table toppers have played that game tens of times, many, many, many times, and uh, those cards still look brand new. They they hold up extremely well to the wear and tear that little guys give to them, whereas these cards here, they're quite flimsy. That's my only complaint that I will make about the overall packaging of the game. Other than that, it is just fantastic. The inserts are, are perfect, uh, designed specifically for the game. So getting past that, let's talk about the game itself. Now, at the heart of this game, it is a racing game, and what sets it apart from the other racing games that I introduced in the introduction, such as Camel Up, um, Monza, Hit the Throttle, is that this game is driven by cards. And so in that, you are introducing a lot more skill sets to your tiny table topper that those other racing games do not introduce. Because you have these cards, it is absolutely critical for proper hand management for you to figure out how it is that you're going to actually move your characters to the finish line ahead of everybody else because you're always got a hand of cards and it's not always going to be full of characters that you actually want to move. So what's really interesting about that is that each of these characters also has different movement abilities which is outlined here on, the, uh, on this card here. And I must apologize uh, throughout the video um, sometimes I'm a little bit scatterbrained because playing with a four-year-old and five-year-old will do that from time to time. But you always resolve these cards, the, the movement of each animal from top to bottom. And uh, sometimes I kind of forget to do that just because I'm you know, too busy taking care of other things. But uh, anyhow, hopefully that wasn't uh, too big of a burden on the video. But they all have different movement abilities as well to them. So then it causes a lot of uh, thinking and a lot of concentration as to going, well, how do I clear my card or my hand of this junk of these animals that I don't want to move, but I need to do it at a time in the race where it doesn't actually hurt, where where it doesn't actually hurt me, where it's it can kind of be absorbed by, by other cards that I'm playing. And in addition, some of these um, different benefits, they don't really trigger right away. Playing one card doesn't really do you any benefit. So for example, the tortoise, he moves 
every single time no matter what unless of course the howling wolf is introduced to the to the game but he's going to move one space every single time but it doesn't matter if you play zero cards or three cards he'll still only move one space so if you're cheering for the tortoise sometimes then when you're dealing with your hand you go well i don't really want to play just one tortoise card because if nobody else piggybacks on top of that well then it's going to be a waste of a card you really need to play four tortoise cards to get that extra movement because with four tortoise cards you actually get two movements as opposed to one so your thinking is a little bit different similarly you got the hare the hare he moves two spaces no matter what unless he's in the lead if he's in the lead well then you know as a fairy tale goes he takes a rest by the tree and he gets lazy and he doesn't move any spaces um, if he's in the lead and you play four cards with him. So then all of these things are things you're watching out for because even if you're not cheering for the hare but you have lots of hare cards in your hand and you see he's in the lead well maybe that's where you want to turf a lot of that junk because it won't have any consequence to the end of the race. So it's a really clever game in terms of introducing all of these different asymmetries or these different um, powers that are um, available on the board and then how you're going to interact with those powers depending on what you want to achieve um, in terms of getting your final victory points and your interaction is going to be driven by how and when you're actually going to be playing the cards from your hand and so I think it is absolutely brilliant for that and this element, this hand management and these asymmetric roles take this game well beyond the children's game category as far as I'm concerned and make this a wonderful family game and also a game that gamers will also enjoy for that very reason, that interaction that occurs. Whereas my personal complaint about some of those other racing games that are more dice dependent, all you don't really feel like you're in control of too many things, especially with more players. You feel that things are quite chaotic from time, turn to turn, whereas at least with here, I feel that there's always something I should be able to do or something I should be able to manage to tr hopefully try to improve my position, if not this turn, for the next turn. Now, if we're talking about asymmetric roles here, well, then how balanced is this game? Because you have all these guys that move at different paces. How does it play out? Well, personally, I find that the more people you play this game with, the better it is is the tighter the game is and the reason being is because at the very beginning everybody's dealt this one card and there's only one of each character in the in the race so if you're playing with a full complement of players well then the majority of the racers will be actually be dealt out in fact all of the racers will be dealt out because there'll be five players so that means that least one person who is playing will be cheering for all the different characters and so there's always going to be a vested interest by the players playing to make sure that their guy is staying up front and it makes for a really interesting seesaw battle because sometimes you don't have the cards to move your guy and he's falling way behind but then you're stashing your cards you're building them up depending on which guy you're cheering for and how you want to play your cards and then you can leapfrog ahead and you can um, position yourself and I usually find that the games always end very, very tightly. If you're playing with fewer players, I find, especially in my experience with my own tiny table toppers, they have their favorites that they like to cheer for and they like to double down. They like to get bo both their cards that they can. They like to get sheep if it's dealt to them. Um, they really like to double down on, on these things. So usually you find that uh, there's only really a vested interest in about three of the actual characters that are racing and the other two everyone just kind of forgets about. And so that's one thing that may occur and those guys um, may end up being beaten quite badly in some of the races but as a daddy table topper I'm aware of that and I know who their favorites are so it's lots of times I'll choose the other guys which I know that they'll probably try to overlook just to try to you know kind of balance it out but if you're playing with four or five people this race is extremely tight and I'm always surprised by how tight this race actually is and the asymmetries again with these powers is just really clever because even like the the sheep like he or the lamb we always call him the sheep but he has great every card you play he moves his number of cards plus one but he always has to stop at the river for a little drink and so what's really interesting about that is that the strategy then with the lamb again will change depending on where these rivers are and uh, how many cards you have to play because you know that even if you play more cards than the amount of spaces he has to get to the river he doesn't care he's going to stop so again it's going back to these asymmetries and the way that this game always has a way of keeping all these different characters in check and so it does a really great job of doing that. 
Now going back to how they actually deal out these uh, hidden objectives, again, I really like the way that this game is set up to do that. Because first off, you're dealt one of these hidden objectives, so you don't have a choice. You have to cheer for the guy that you're dealt with. And if that was just the case, I know my tiny table toppers are quite disappointed if they get some guys that they don't want to cheer for. Like for example, if they get the turtle, they're a little bit bummed out about that. But what's neat about the, this is then you set up the track then you're dealt your cards, and then from the hand of seven cards that you're dealt, you get to choose one additional character that you want to choose for. So you get to see how the track is set up. And so sometimes, you know, if you see that the water is set up, you know, back to back or at different spots, you might not want to choose the lamb because you might feel that you might get going and you might stop at the finish line just one too short like I have um, done here. So then you get to see if maybe you're not, you want to change and get something different. And the cool thing about that is as a young tiny table topper, you're going to find that they're going to have their favorites and if they don't get their favorite dealt to them right away they might be upset I know my little guys when they didn't get uh, first it was the wolf they really liked they didn't get it they were really upset we like no no relax you're gonna have another opportunity to add another character to your hand and cheer for this guy and so they actually have some power over still getting their favorite and so the cool thing about that is by being dealt one of these cards, they have to figure out how to play differently in different strategies depending on who they were dealt. But they still have the comfort of having a guy that they like um, by choosing their own card afterwards. So it's able to keep them comfortable and keep them you know, focused on the guys that they really like and learn how to play differently depending on what type of card they were actually randomly dealt to them. So I, I really like that component. I think it's a great mix of how they've done these hidden objectives. Like for example, I talked about hit the throttle before and hit the throttle you're dealt a card that has two race car objectives that you want to finish first and second um, but the problem with that is that's just a card that's dealt to you and I know my little guys if they don't get the card with the color that they really like they get a little bit upset about that whereas this gives you a little bit more control on the hare and the tortoise now just to wrap up the discussion about these hidden objectives and final victory point conditions one thing that I find to be true in this game also in hit the throttle when you have these hidden objectives is that the tendency for my tiny table toppers to cheat and to look at what the other guy is doing increases by orders of magnitude because at this age you're still they they, they want to know what everybody is doing they want to know what you're cheering for so I find that in particular in this game they're always kind of looking at each other's cards and they're always kind of checking things out and so it's okay, you know, we're, we're here to have fun, um, but it does provide a good opportunity for you to talk about what is appropriate behavior, um, uh, uh, cheating, and they're like, well, it's not really cheating, but they're curious, right? They want to see what's going on. You're like, well, no, even if you have the opportunity to see the other person's hands, just don't look, you know, because sometimes they hold a, their hand of cards open up a little bit more, and they're so curious, they want to know what they're cheering for, they want to see what they consider junk, what they're stockpiling, what they're going for. Um, I I find that the tendency to kind of look over the shoulders is a little bit higher in this game. So it does provide a couple good talking moments with my tiny table toppers about what's appropriate or not appropriate. Which takes me to my next point. The cool thing about the hidden objectives as well though is the meta game, trying to figure out what the other guy is trying to do and what he's cheering for, what he's doing, and trying to create those you know temporary alliances or partnerships to hopefully try to goad somebody into getting rid of their junk and meanwhile helping you. And that only really works if you got some hidden objectives and they don't really know if you're really going for that guy or not, but they gotta get rid of some cards so they can open up some more free space so that hopefully they can get some more cards that actually are benefit to them. So I find that when you're talking about, well, don't look at what this other guy's doing, try to figure it out. You're starting to introduce a little bit more of that meta game and that ability for them to try to deduce and then trying to bluff their way into getting somebody else to help them, whether they and when they don't think that they really are or not. So it, it does provide a little bit of this interaction and discussion points for me and my tiny table toppers, and perhaps you'll find that as well. And finally, there is some light, light elements of math in this game. In fact, if you look at the summary card, you see that they actually use a variable of X to define how many spaces your guy gets to move. So you might um, call this a small, small introduction to algebra and uh, some very basic counting that's used throughout this game. But without 
Any further ado, that is it. So I hope you enjoyed the review. I hope you enjoyed seeing my tiny table toppers play. And I hope that this has given you many, many points to consider as to whether or not that this game might be appropriate for you and your tiny table toppers. And if you enjoyed this, please come find me on YouTube or on Facebook, Connect More Board Games, the same for both of them. I would love to see you there and for future videos that I might be doing with my tiny table toppers or another series of videos I do called Avoid the Rules, which stands for a video of instruction and demonstration that helps ease rule understanding and learning. Easy start. In that series of videos, it's just me and I take on more heavier games like Polis, Yido, um, Kill Shakespeare, these types of games in which I go through a very detailed explanation of the rules. Um, so that you don't actually have to flip open the rule book yourself. So I hope you guys have a very great day and happy gaming. Cheers.